Okay, welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to look again at another capital structure problem, which, but, which is similar but also different from the previous two capital structure videos that I had earlier posted. Now, here in this problem, we are going to find out the value of the firm as well as you know all the other capitalization rates, KE and KO, using both net income approach as well as net operating income approach. Now, before you do anything, you know, this is, I would say, you <coughs> let this be a practice that before you try to solve any problem, draw the graph under NI approach as well as NOI approach showing the capitalization rates. Now this is debt equity ratio. Let's say this is an I approach, net income approach and net operating income approach. Now according to net net income approach as the debt equity ratio increases as the financial leverage increases in a firm the kd cost of debt along with ke cost of equity will remain constant but what will change is the ko that it'll, it'll decrease as the financial leverage increases. And under NOI approach, as the financial leverage increases, as the debt equity ratio increases, KD will remain constant. But so also will KO, overall cost of capital, that will also remain constant. But what will change will increase here is the cost of equity so keep that in mind and another thing is that <coughs> under NOI approach which is where the capital structure of a firm is irrelevant whether they have zero uh, debt equity ratio of 20 percent 50 percent 80 or 100 percent the capital structure is irrelevant why because KD, KO and the value of the firm under varying debt equity ratio will remain the same. But not so with net income approach because here under net income approach, the capital structure is relevant. All right, now let us solve this problem. Company X and company Y are in the same risk class and are identical in every respect except that company X uses debt while company Y does not. And I've mentioned earlier that a company that does not employ debt in its capital structure is known as unlevered firm. And a company that uses debt is known as levered firm. So the levered firm here is X, company X. The levered firm has 9 lakhs debentures carrying 10% rate of interest. Both the firms earn 20% operating profit on their total assets of 15 lakhs. Assume perfect capital markets rational investors and so on so again the assumption remains you know true that there is no income tax <coughs> excuse me there's no income tax all all investors are rational they have the same amount of information and uh, securities are infinitely divisible and so on so those are the characteristics of perfect capital market and a capitalization rate of 15 percent for an all equity firm what is an all equity firm a firm that does not Again, a firm that does not employ debt in its capital structure is known as an all-equity firm. So which is an all-equity firm here in this problem? Yes, company Y is, the, is an all-equity firm. Now, compute the value of firms X and Y using NI approach. Compute the value of each firm using NOI approach. Using the NOI approach, calculate the overall cost of capital, KO, for firms X and Y. Which of these two firms has an optimal capital structure according to the NOI approach why all right first thing first all right so now 
show valuation under ni approach okay so so company x and company y all right show the ebit operating profit or operating income ebit is what is 20% okay on 15 lakhs so 20% of 15 lakhs so that is 3 lakhs both for company x as well as company y minus interest now the interest rate is 10% so at the rate of 10% now company y is an unlevered firm an all equity firm where there is no debt so the interest obviously will be zero but here it is 10% on the debt value debenture value of 9 lakhs so 10% of 9 lakhs is 90,000 so we are left with again we don't have income tax and there is no preference dividend so the equity earnings will be two lakhs ten thousand and three lakhs now that that is your equity earnings let's close that okay next let's find out the value of the firms okay the value of the firm of both company x as well as company y now here it says a capitalization rate of 15 percent for an all equity company now if the capitalization rate okay let's say ke cost of equity is 10 percent for an all equity firm then it has to be 15 percent for company x as well why is that L again here you see now whether there is zero debt or there is debt your ke remains constant so if it is 15 percent here it has to be 15 percent out here also now let's find out market value of equity e what is market value of equity is nothing but equity earnings divided by k e all right so the equity uh, so market value of equity e is nothing but 2 lakhs 10000 divided by f you know the 15% so it is 14 lakhs here and for company y 3 lakhs divided by 15 it is 20 lakhs now remember under ni approach the value of the firms whether it's an unlevered firm or levered firm is not the same so the value of an unlevered firm is different from the value of an unlevered firm all right so you see that it's different next let's f so d market value of market value of debt market value of debt here is what is nine lakhs and here it'll be zero because company y is an unlevered firm okay so v now v is equal to d plus e so 14 lakhs plus 9 lakhs is equal to 23 lakhs and here 20, 20 lakhs plus 0 is equal to 20 lakhs so there we have it now let's find out ko even though they have not asked us to find out the overall cost of capital under net income approach but let's find out 
okay k o the overall cost of capital now k o is equal to e b i t divided by the value of the firm that we have found out so what is e b i t e b i t is 3 lakhs it is 3 lakhs divided by v which is 23 lakhs okay you'll get 13 point zero four percent now that is ko for the levered firm x company x all right and what do you think for company y it'll be greater or it'll be less it will be greater remember okay as the firm moves from an unlevered firm to a levered firm ko will decrease so obviously ko here should be greater than 13 percent and how much will that be so it is nothing but three lakhs divided by you know uh, 20 lakhs you'll get 15 you'll get 15 percent all right so for an unlevered firm you look here for an unlevered firm in this problem okay ko is equal to ke which is equal to 15 percent okay here ke is 15 percent for an unlevered firm so, all right so ko will also be 15 percent so there we have see now valuation under NOI approach okay that's the next part of the of the problem now we have already computed we know what is the EBI uh, the uh, equity earnings all right so let's show the equity earnings first here equity earnings and what is the equity earnings this is under company x this is 2 lakhs 10 under company y it is 3 lakhs all right and <coughs> we have to find out we have to find out the value of the firm let's first show kd now according to noi approach kd remains constant okay for all varying degrees of financial leverage so kd here in this problem kd is 10 percent so it'll be 10 percent here and 10 percent here and what is d market value of debt again yes we already know it is nine lakhs for the levered firm company x and zero for the unlevered firm company y all right now let us find out what is E. What is the value of E? Okay, before we find out E, we need to know what is the value of V, right? Now, what is the value of V? V is equal to EBIT divided by K O. All right. Now, what is uh, what is a uh, what do you think will be the the value of of V under company X and company Y? Now, how will you find out? You know what is EBIT two lakhs ten thousand. And, you, and do we know what is KO? Now, always remember, for an unlevered firm, for an unlevered firm, okay, Z, where there is no debt, KO is always equal to KE. And here in this problem, we have already mentioned that, you know, that the capitalization rate, okay, is 15% for an all-equity firm. All right. So, therefore, here ko will be equal to what ko will be equal to 
fifteen percent, and fifth, and the KO for, you know, under NOI approach remains the same. Okay, it is constant. So if it is fifteen percent for an unlevered firm, it'll be fifteen percent for a levered firm. So fifteen percent, fifteen percent. So what is uh, EB, uh, EBIT here? Three lakhs. Now three lakhs divided by 0.15 is equal to 20 lakhs. Oh, we made a mistake. 20 lakhs. Here it is also 20 lakhs. So there we found we we got the value of V. All right. So E is what? E will be V minus D. We know what is the value of V. We know what is the value of D. So this will be 11 lakhs. And here it will be 20 lakhs. And finally, KE. How do you find out KE? KE is nothing but equity earnings. Equity earnings divided by market value of equity E. Now, what is equity earnings in this problem? 2 lakhs, 10,000 divided by E. We have found out 11 lakhs. Okay, so that works out to 19.09%. Okay. And for the unlevered firm cap company Y, it will be uh, 3 lakhs divided by 20 lakhs, which works out to 15%. All right, so always remember that for an unlevered firm, KO is always equal to KE. So if you see here, KO is 15% for an unlevered firm, KE is also 15%. And if you've noticed here, it is 15% for company Y, unlevered, and 19.09% for company X. And if and according to this and I approach, as the financial leverage increases, what happens to KE? KE will increase. All right. So KE has increased from 15% to 19.09%. So that is so we have already found out. Okay, the values as well as the various uh, capitalization rates. Now, which of these two firms has an optimal capital structure according to NI approach? Now, according to NI approach, there is no such thing as optimal capital structure because uh, you know it does not matter whether the firm is unlevered or not. The overall cost of capital remains the same. See, 15%. It remains the same for both company X as well as company Y as well as the value of the firm. See, the value of the firm also remains the same. It's equal to 20 lakhs for X, 20 lakhs for Y. So there is no such thing as an optimal capital structure according to the net operating income NOI approach. All right, and that is why the NOI, NOI approach is also, an, is also known as an irrelevant approach for capital structure. With that, we are done. Thanks.